the gear shifts are really quick. Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're gonna be going over the 2020 Lexus IS300. So, as always, a huge shout out and thank you to the Larry H. Miller Lexus here in Murray for providing us with the IS300. Check out their inventory in the link below. Let's just get right into the video. Under the hood of the IS300, we have a nationally aspirated 3.5 liter V6 that goes through a six speed automatic transmission because this one is paired with the all wheel drive system. Fuel economy is 19 around town and then 26 on the highway with power outputs being 260 horsepower and then 258 pound feet of torque. If you want a little bit more power and a little bit more torque, then go for the IS350. The zero to 60 time is just under seven seconds. Now let's go over the front end of the IS 300. Now the one thing I really like is actually those little lights, those will illuminate for the turn signals. I just think it's a cool little cluster just how that looks with all the little LED points. Now for the rest of the lights, let's kind of zoom in so you guys can see it a little bit better. You get full LEDs for the headlights themselves and then you get the cool little LED accent light. It's the Lexus check mark. Now you guys can see the uh, venting right here and then all along the front, Lexus logo doubles as a sensor, but this kind of like just has it like normal distinctive Lexus look. And it's actually kind of hard to tell the difference between this and the 350. Now coming around the side here, we've got two 25 millimeter tires on 18 inch rims in the front and in the rear as well. I love the finish on it. So they kind of have this like machine gray finish, but it definitely has kind of like this more just like reflective metallic look to it that just looks absolutely fantastic. It's not really coming through on the camera very well. Maybe if I zoom in, you guys can see it just a little bit better, but yeah, it's just a really nice look. Now this one does have the F-Sport package. So it does have the F-Sport badge. That's uh, probably the most important part of that package. So people know what you got, but there's your side angle on the IS300. Now here's the key fob for the IS300. You've got a couple functions. You've got the lock at the top, the unlock in the middle, and then the release for the trunk. And then on the back, you got the Lexus logo. This does come with remote start. Now you have to press it in like the right order and then hold down the <laughs> key. Sometimes it works really well. Sometimes it's kind of a little bit finicky, but then it'll start it up and you guys will be able to hear. Well, the 3.5 liter V6, which this 3.5 liter V6 is pretty bassy. Obviously we're gonna go into the trunk. So we just have to hold that down and then it'll actually unlatch the trunk, but you do have to do the rest of the work yourself. So you just have to pick it up. Not difficult by any means. And in terms of storage space, you guys remember from the IS350, I mean, the storage space back here is all the same. You get little floor mats that say Lexus on it, and you even get a first aid kit. Now, if we roll those uh, floor mats away, there's this little tab here. You can pick that up, and that'll reveal the spare tire in the IS300. And then when you are done with everything in the back, all you have to do is just uh, throw that down, and that's all. Now, coming to the rear of the IS300, I actually really like the door panel now. The thing I like the most is the leather. It's just really nice to the touch. Obviously, you guys can't see that through the camera, but just trust me, I just love the feel of the leather that Lexus uses. The stitching is really nice, but my favorite part is the material right here. It just has this really nice, like, grainy look to it, and the fact they didn't do wood just definitely looks a little bit sportier. Now, here are the seats in the back of the IS300, and I don't know what that's doing there, but bye. See ya. Okay, bye. There's the whole seat set up. And then you got the gray leather, which contrasts nicely against the black. And we're gonna pop back here. So gotta duck just a little bit to get into the back here. And I'm 5'11", if you guys are wondering. Now in terms of headroom, if I like stretch all the way up, I go through, so I kinda gotta slouch just a little bit. And then in terms of leg room, it's got a good amount of leg room as well. You got a little storage pocket down there, a couple of vents, and you get this little cup holder thing, which is a little bit over-engineered. So you kinda gotta like pop it out like that, which I mean, it's decent, so uh, yeah. Now coming up to the front, we do have Kia's entry. This car does come with blind spot monitoring as well. The door panel on the front is identical to what's in the rear, other than the fact you got your regular controls for the windows, mirrors, all that kind of stuff. Now here are the seats in the front, and they actually made them look really sporty, just with how they shaped the headrest and then the bolsters all around. And they use that really soft leather again, which just feels really nice to the touch. There's your power adjustments. Here are what the pedals look like on the IS300. And then you've got all of your regular controls over here. So like your hood and your trunk release. This is for the blind spot monitoring, the lights, parking sensors. And then here's the look at the back so you guys can see kind of like the paddle shifters. Now up here, it is a push button start. So you just gotta start it up right there. And then the gauge will kind of pop out. And then this will do kind of like a little Lexus animation and everything will come to life. So here's the steering wheel, and here at the top, they actually continue that like darker wood trim that's on the door panels. And then you have the grippier leather on the side, and then the smoother leather at the bottom does say F Sport. 
all your controls for the little center screen are right there and then you've got some controls for like the collision assistance the lane departure assistance and then more stuff for the center screen voice command controls and then these are like your radio controls those are the paddles again for the six speed automatic and one more thing we've got a little stock for the lights and for the windshield wipers now we're done with the steering wheel. We've got the little gauge cluster set up here, which is pretty neat because it's the one that Lexus has that kind of moves over to the side. It has a pretty cool look to it, but in terms of the information, you guys can see you just get kind of like basic information on the vehicle. So you can go through like your music, you can even turn it into like a little compass, and then obviously vehicle information. So pretty straightforward, or you can just kind of pop it there to the side again and have the uh, RPMs front and center. Here is the center infotainment system. First off, we're going to pop it into reverse. You guys will see the backup camera and it's got little trajectory lines, but you still have the navigation on the one side, which is pretty interesting. Resolution on it is really solid. Now with the infotainment system, it's not a touchscreen. You control everything via a little keypad and this is what it looks like. So you got to kind of do the uh, wiggle wiggle with it. <laughs> but you actually do get some physical buttons, so it does make using it a little bit easier. Now, I do like their actual like touch pad that's kind of like a mouse pad versus this thing because this is a little bit harder to use. If you kind of use it like this, it doesn't really respond all that well. You kind of have to like actually shift it with your uh, fingers, but that is uh, the infotainment system for you. Lexus gives you this cool little clock and a couple vents right there. This is where you can control all of the climate controls, and it's cool, it's just this little dial that you basically slide up and down for the temperature itself. Just a really neat little feature in my opinion. And then yes, you can put a CD in it. Coming down here, you actually do get heated and ventilated seats for the front and the driver has it too. And a heated steering wheel on top of that. This is the shifter for that six speed automatic transmission. You do have the manual shift mode so you can shift the gears yourself. Again, you can use the shifter or the paddle shifters, whichever you prefer. And then you guys kind of saw this earlier with the infotainment system and then the shortcut buttons. This is just where you can rest your wrist on, which is pretty nice. And then you get your drive mode select over here, which is actually gonna pop in the center screen. So if I pop it over into eco, it'll just say eco. Push it in for normal, it'll say normal. And then you've got the sport mode. There is no sport plus. So you just have those three different drive modes to go through and snow. I should say there's the fourth drive mode. But when you press snow on, it just pops on a snow there at the very bottom. It's kind of hard to notice. Spill control is right there, couple of cup holders. And then with the center console, Notice that you do get a little USB and auxiliary there. And again, that really nice soft touch leather. And then they got the nice wood trim on the glove box. Now you just press that little button and then it'll pop open and it does have that little shelf inside of it. Now up top here, we do have a little sunroof. So it's just a regular sunroof, really soft to the touch cloth for the headliner. They did do a black headliner, as you guys can see. Light controls clearly labeled. So uh, yeah, that's the top. Now we've gone over the interior on the IS300. Let's quickly talk about pricing. So this IS300 in the F-Sport package with all the equipment it has, stickers for about $49,000, which I mean, for being a luxury sedan with all wheel drive, the power that it has, and and then all of the interior amenities, I feel like that's actually pretty solid. That all being said, let's take this IS300 out and see how she drives. Let's talk about visibility here in the IS300 before we set off. So visibility over the hood, it's really easy to see out of it, just slopes down and this is actually really nice up here. So again, they kind of do the stitching and the soft touch leather. So you could be like just riding around and just kind of betting your leather. But anyways, you've got the visibility through both the mirrors. Remember, it does have the blind spot monitoring. And then here's the visibility all throughout the rear of the IS300. So overall, I mean, for a sedan of this size, visibility is solid and that all being said, Let's set off. We are setting off here in the 2020 IS 300. And well, just like always, let's first talk about the road noise and the ride quality. So in terms of the road noise that comes through into the cabin, I mean, compared to the IS 350, it feels pretty much identical. Like I'm not noticing a difference between the two cars at all. And we're gonna have a quick break in that so we can talk about the steering here while we make our first turn. So steering's really light. In terms of directness, 
I would put it on average with most other cars in the segment. And the thing I'm noticing is the steering wheel is like really squishy. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it, but like it's it's really like it's a good thing. Like it's, it's squishy in a good way. Like it's really comfortable to just like rest your hands. It's like a lot softer than uh, most other steering wheels. And then we will get into the ride quality. So going over a couple things, again, doesn't really upset the car. So again, from that road noise ride quality perspective, it does good for a luxury car. It's pretty much right on average. It's just right where it should be. And I mean, that's expected. Lexus has really good quality with their cars. And so, uh, yeah. Let's get our acceleration here with the IS 300. So the gear shifts are really quick. I've said this in my other reviews of the six-speed automatic. Something that I'm actually really impressed with on this transmission is just like how quick and responsive it is on the upshifts and on the downshifts. They do take a second. When you're under throttle on an upshift, it's pretty much instant. It's just the downshifts. When you're not on throttle and you just downshift it, it will take a moment. In terms of the power, I can't really feel that much of a difference between this and an IS350. I mean, it... It feels like it might be a little bit slower, but it's really hard to perceive. Like it's so close in terms of just the acceleration between the two that it's just, it's really hard to perceive a difference. And that'll actually lead me into summing things up. So the, the big question here is going to be, hey, should I get the IS300 or should I step up and pay a little bit more to get the IS350? And what I'm gonna say is I think that the IS300 is kind of the better route to go. Now, in terms of pricing, typically what I've seen is the IS350, like an IS350 F Sport is probably gonna be somewhere in that like 52, 53, maybe $54,000 range. So you're gonna be about, let's just say $4,000 more for this a similarly packaged car to this F Sport. And so if you're gonna be about $4,000 more, you'd wanna get $4,000 more car. And I just don't think the IS350 is $4,000 more car. And it kind of shows in the uh, volume of sales. The Lexus stores typically will sell a lot more IS 300s than they do of the IS 350s. I think they're both really cool cars. I just think that the IS 300 is a better route to go and that's a big reason why I decided to review it today. So uh, yeah, if you're looking for a cool all-wheel drive luxury sedan, check out the IS 300. There we have it everyone, the 2020 Lexus IS 300 in the F Sport package. And again, a huge shout out and thank you to the Larry H. Miller Lexus here in Murray for providing us with this IS300. Check out their inventory in the link below. I will see all of you in the next video.